chapter 10 of the Gospel of John is known as the chapter of the discourse on Jesus, the Good Shepherd. We will read from the first 10 verses of this chapter today. These verses contain part of the discourse. The discourse appears in the Gospel of John immediately after Jesus has healed a blind man on the Sabbath, because of which the religious leaders are upset with him. This is the last full discourse of the public ministry of Jesus. The farewell discourse, which is later from chapter 14 to chapter 16, is exclusively given to the disciples and not to the people. The focus in the first part of the discourse is on the shepherd and his relation to the flock. A contrast is made between the authorized shepherd and the bandit. The authorized shepherd enters by the gate, but the bandit climbs in another way. The reason for this is because the gatekeeper opens the gate for the authorized shepherd, but not for the bandit. Since he is the authorized shepherd, the sheep hear and recognize his voice. When he calls, they answer. There is an intimate bond between the shepherd and his sheep. They recognize and know each other. The shepherd walks ahead of the sheep and leads them out. The sheep are confident in his leadership and thus follow him trustingly. They will not follow a stranger, but will rather run away from him. The comment of the evangelist serves two purposes. The first is that the reader must understand that Jesus is using a figure of speech and thus must not take the metaphor literally. The reader must realize that many meanings are possible and therefore must go below the surface to the deeper meaning. The second point is that the listeners did not understand this figure of speech. If seen in the context of the miracle and the healing of the blind man on the Sabbath and the objection of the religious leaders because the healing took place on the Sabbath, then it seems clear that the authorized shepherd is Jesus and that the bandits are those who object. Jesus has the good of the sheep in his mind and heart, and therefore he will lead them on, lead them to safety. The bandit will not. In the second part, while the pastoral imagery is still used, the discourse moves in a new direction. Jesus is also the gate for the sheep. The gate has two functions. One is to give access to those who are legitimate and have a right to enter. And the other is to prevent those whose intention is to cause destruction from entering. Rightful entry into the field is only through Jesus, who is indeed the gate. The text of today concludes with one of the most beautiful and comprehensive statements of the mission of Jesus. Jesus is the good shepherd and gate. He has come to give life and life to the poor. Anyone who listens to his voice will receive this life in abundance. As the gate, Jesus is the way to this life, but he is not really that. He also leads the way, and so as the good shepherd, Jesus is himself life 
and he gives it by giving his own life. These are non-transferable attitudes. They derive from the heart of the identity of Jesus as the one who is sent by God. It is very easy for us to want to follow bandits because bandits seem to have that which we think we need. Jesus, however, is inviting us to follow him as the truth, the way, and the life. Will we dare to do that today?